Oh, okay. Okay, so now I'm following you. And we can... Hello, Mama Needs Wine. I am I am now on Blab. And I am on Periscope. And what I'm doing today is I am doing a fundraiser on Blab. So those of you that are on Periscope, if you want to join me on Blab, you can. And this light is making me look all washed out on Periscope. It's making me look okay on... It's making me look okay on... Uh, Okay, that's a little better. Um, and so you can join us. We are um, trying to raise money for Living Above Hurt, which uh, our goal today is $500. And what we're doing, for those of you that have a website, a blog, a business, a personal website, that you need to get some traffic. We are, I have a gentleman who is donating his time Welcome, Dolores. Uh, donating his time to say, I'm going for the next 30 days, I'm going to just send targeted traffic to these websites. So everyone that donates $20 or more today, he's going to then take your URL, put it in his system, and for the next 30 days, send you traffic. And what he's doing is he is taking, you know, looking for some sp specific keywords and those keywords you can give him or he can read over your site and he'll choose the keywords and he's then sending those that information you know that information to his system so his system can put you in front of people that want to hear what you have to say so here here it here how this is how it works hey welcome peter welcome mario say you are a relationship coach right and you want to talk to people about their relationships how to get into a relationship whatever it may be he is sending those people to your website so it it matches it's not people that are you know that feel that their relationship is great and they don't need help it's people that are looking for you they're looking for your services for your products he's sending them to your website and he's doing this and he's donating his time for those that donate to this cause. And so again, living above hurt, we deal with people who have been abused. And when I talk about abuse, I'm talking about sexual, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, uh, you know, bullied, cyber bullying, real life bullying. We're talking about abuse. I would love to be a guest. Okay, yes, we would love to have you. Come on. Uh, there's an open seat if you want to come on. We can definitely, because that's what I'm doing. I'm just here raising every once in a while. I'm going to talk about what we're raising the money for and what you get for helping us today. But, you know, I'm just here to have a conversation. So if you want to have a conversation about relationships, if you want to have a conversation about abuse, if you want to have a conversation about empowerment and transformation, I am a transformation empowerment coach when I'm not being a director of two nonprofits. Um, I'm a pastor, I'm an author, I'm a writer. So, I mean, I, I, I feel that I'm well-rounded. <laughs> so I can talk about very, you know, a lot of things, but I am passionate about abuse because I was abused and that abuse then caused me to lash out and hurt other people because I was trying to protect myself. And so in all of that, when people come to me, you know, it, it, I tell this story and, you know, I say it all the time. And so I'm pretty sure this will not be the first nor the last time that I say this. But there's a story and I forget where I get it from. I've, I've heard it several different types of ways, but it's always this. There was a man who fell into a pit. And he was yelling, somebody come help me. Somebody help me get out of the pit. And a lawyer walks by and looks into the pit and says, hey, what's going on down there? He says, can you help me get out of the pit? And the lawyer says, sure. He tosses him $100. And he's like, how is this going to help me get out of the pit? And then 
he the lawyer walks on and goes on his merry way and then a doctor comes by and the doctor looks and he says hey what's going on he says can you help me get out can you throw me a ladder can you help me get out of this pit and the doctor says oh sure and he writes him a prescription and tosses it in and he says how is this prescription going to help me get out of the pit and the doctor says i don't know and he walks on right and so just a normal guy, just an average Joe comes by and he's looking and he looks in the pit and he goes, hey, what's going on? And he says, can you help me get out of the pit? I've been here for so long. Can you please help me? And the man says, sure. He shrugs his shoulders and hops in. And the man goes, oh, my God. Now we're both stuck. Why did you do that? You could have helped me from out there. Why did you do that? He said, no worries. I've been here before. I know the way out. And that's what I do. I go into a situation and the victim, it's, 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 it's not I'm here to uh, make you feel worse. It's not I'm here to uh, show you how you could have avoided this. I'm here to show you the way out. I'm here to show you that you can have a life that is above the hurt. You don't have to be here. You don't have to settle. And sometimes I deal with people that are still in the abusive situation. And sometimes I deal with people that have come out of the situation. And sometimes the abuse happened years ago, but they're still struggling with their healing. They're still struggling with knowing how to maneuver themselves in the world. And so our theme or our mission for living above hurt is to transform lives to thrive and to empower them to know how to go to move forward and know how to get to that next level. And I always say, even in my coaching, I say, I move people out of the pain of their past to their purpose because when you know that you have a reason to be here when you understand that nothing just happens to you even though these things are bad even though they are they they are terrible things and god forbid that they would happen to anyone that doesn't have to define who you are it doesn't have to define what you can do in your future and see, I thought that I thought because I was this battered little girl, I was this person that I couldn't become anything more than that, that, that little girl that used to be battered, that little girl that was molested, that little girl that went through this. I, I didn't think that I could do anything. And then that made me angry, right? Because people told me that I wasn't good enough. That, that's why this happened to you. And that's why this happened. That's why your life is like it is. And this, that, and the other. And so then I became angry. And then hurt people. Hurt Linda. Hurt other people. Because I was trying to protect myself. I was trying to make sure that no one ever made me feel less than again. And so now the victim becomes the victimizer. And so... That's what I go in. That's what I do for living above her. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, you said your name was Lady T? Or we... Okay, all right. I wanted to make sure. So, welcome. How are you doing? Oh, not a problem. Um, so, tell me, because I know I read your... I read your description on blab about what you do so tell us a little bit about what it is that you do okay Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, and I know someone said, you're going to go on and try to do fundraising today. I was like, yeah, you know, maybe people are feeling the love and they'll be like, oh, sure, we'll give to her because we feel the love, um, you know, but I, I think that it's something that 
it, it, it needs more people need to talk about it in a positive way because we always talk we always talk about it from the victim stance and we don't talk about how people can overcome and how people can thrive and so you know you are a perfect example as well as myself that you can go through this and you can go through a process of healing and restoration and then you are able to then show your brilliance to the world right you're able to show up strong and powerful and then reach back and help somebody else so you know basically you are the the um what I call them, the poster child <laughs> for what we do in living above her. You know, I know you didn't go through living above her, but you just sitting here shows that people can live and go through this and then thrive, not just exist, not just like you said, not just um, strive, but they can actually thrive and have a full life and and have a power in the world that no one else can have you know what I mean I can't be you because I didn't go through your situation but I can learn from you and so I'm I'm glad to have you here so where are you from where are you located okay oh yeah yeah because that's where I am I'm in California California dreaming <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. So, how let, let me ask you this. Um how long has it been since you were in your abusive situation? Okay. And and what was the the process of you from, you know, the last day of that of relationship to where you are now? What was the process that you what was the journey that you had to go through? If you had to put it in steps what was the journey like okay okay Exactly. Wow. Hmm. Wow. 
Wow, wow. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Wow. You know, I was just listening to you and I'm like, uh, the 
the whole thing when you were talking about, I was like, okay, yeah, I remember, because mine wasn't, it wasn't Proverbs, mine was Isaiah, where it talks, uh, Isaiah 61, where it talks about to bind up the brokenhearted, and I'm like, it says a bunch of other stuff in there, but the bind up the brokenhearted, I was like, okay, how can I bind up the brokenhearted when I'm brokenhearted, you know, that doesn't make sense, and so then he took me to Mark, the fifth chapter where it talks about the woman with the issue of blood. And when I did the study, I found out that, you know, life is in the blood. And so it wasn't really an issue, even though her physical ailment was an issue of blood, it was an issue of life. And so you are broken hearted because of the issues that you've had in your life. And I'm telling you, come to me and I'll heal you of them. And then it goes down where it says, when he, Jesus said, who touched me, she then had to fall in worship and tell her story. And so you don't get to just sit here and be like, okay, I'm okay. Now you get okay. No, you go back and you tell people about it. But later on, it came to, I heard a sermon about just be, you know what I mean? So when you were saying be, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that one too. <laughs> just be, you know? And I remember what the lady was saying. She's like, we're so busy doing that we're not being. And so stop doing and just be, you know? And I mean, to me, that, you know, that's kind of the first thing that I tell people when they come is like, you know what? I know what was done to you. I know what you want to try to do, but let's just be in the moment. Let's just be, let's just work on being. And I think that, you know, that's, that's a wonderful place to start, especially when you're trying to figure out where to go and how to go and you know, how do I change my life and how do I get back to that place where I'm feeling okay? You know, cause I mentioned you, you mentioned you had physical things going on in your life and, and, you know, as well as illnesses and things. And so I think that, you know, you're, you're perfect. God sent for what we're talking about today, because this is, this is basically what living above hurt is all about. It's about being in the moment, understanding who you are. And um, I'm going to take my earphones out because I just realized I'm still on Periscope. And they're probably saying, okay, she talking, but what is the other person saying? So now y'all can hear. Thank you guys for par on Periscope. Um, and I just think that that is important it you know not just for individual women but for men too because we deal with men that have gone through this type of stuff and and we try to and it's a different dynamic with women because I think women come in and most of them are ready to be okay whatever needs to happen, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm tired of this and I'm ready. But men come in like, oh, wait a minute, I got it together. I just need you to um, give me a bus pass, you know? And I'm like, but you came here for a reason. <laughs> you know, you didn't just come here for a bus pass because you could get a bus pass anywhere, but you came to this place. And so that's kind of what we do. And I just, I, I'm excited. So tell us a little bit about, okay, is your book just letters or what, what is the makeup of the book? Well, Kenneth's Relationship Survive is a spiritual um, transformational book. And so this is the second edition of it. Mm -hmm. um, it can be, um, you can, your audience can actually order it offline um, on my website, which is um, LT Dixon. Um, or LadyTamika.com. Both of them will point you to the right direction. But this book actually gives you seven um, discoveries um, doing life's biggest challenge. So it gives you the seven powers to help you to shift in the way that you, um, and to shift in your perspective of how life is when life is happening. And so oh, okay. one of the things that um, I talk about, the very first power is knowing that you're already complete. A lot of people think that the, the things that happen to them actually um, or them having some kind of defect or mm -hmm. life happening, that something is wrong with them. Exactly. That there's a, you know, a disability with them. Exactly. And the truth of the matter is that you're already complete. Exactly. If exactly. you get into a relationship, 
Um, or if you get married, they're not coming to complete you because you're already complete. Exactly. If you have children, you're not, you know, your children are not there to complete you. You're already complete. And so when I, I think realized that at the beginning that I was already created complete, whole and complete, perfect, just the way I am, whether I um, um, pursue or get any accolades or anything like that, I'm already complete. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. So in the first um, in that first part, I talk about a letter. I wrote a letter to my biological father who wasn't around. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I thanked him because I wanted to free him. And most people think, you know, that if they had a bad childhood or one parent is absent, that they're incomplete. So I needed them to know my readers to know that no, 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 no. Whether um, your father or your mother is there. The mere fact that you are alive right now today says that you there was complete. love that was abound for you and that you're complete exactly. and everything that's exactly. going on. So that's one of the principles that I give them starting off is just knowing that, you know, maybe they should write this letter to free themselves because some of the relationships that they're having is a, a direct reflection from something that has happened prior. So if they can um, hone on to them being complete them knowing that, you know what, I'm I'm perfectly made, that there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just having life happen to me at this point, exactly. but I can rise above it. So exactly. um, that's one of the principles. So I give seven um, powers is what it's called. Um, mm-hmm. I give 23 own your powers um, in there. And these were just messages that people who spoke into my life did not know that they was even speaking a powerful word. But I started to live on those principles because it helped me to, to, to move from from surviving into exactly. thriving. Exactly. So this is exactly. this yeah. So it, it is a you know and it, it you know it turned because this is the second edition. So it turned into a workbook or um so I give them space in it to write. Okay. And a lot of times okay. um because it's a short read, my readers what was happening when I first wrote the book, they were calling me and saying, Oh to uh, Lady T, like I didn't know that this happened to me and this, that and the other. And I said, you know what, I need to go back and give them some practical applications that they can use so that they can stop blowing my phone up unless they want to pay for a coach, <laughs> um, you know, to help them with. So exactly. I told them, I said, let me just, you know, fix this one for you right here. And they, I mean, and they, they think, cause they read through it real fast that, oh my God, you know, it was a quick read. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I give instructions on how to read it. Mm-hmm. I tell them that it, it, it takes 52 days. Um, we have seven cycles of 52 days in our lives. From the day that you was born to the next year of that um, year. So you're not even working from a calendar year of January. You need to know the season and cycle that you're in. Exactly. And so that cycle of 72, I tell them to write, um, to read the book and once um, cycle and then go back and rewrite, um, read it again so that they can really let the book manifest. You know, yeah, yeah, and be what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. and you know, it's yeah. it's, and, you know, it's, it's really powerful, it's really and I powerful. I know that this I, was I ordained because I was in a different blab. I mean, the same title, but in a different blab, and I started having issues, and so I had to shut it down and restart it over again. And that's when you popped in. So I I know that this you know this is something, and you said you're in California, right? Yes, I am. So are you in North or South California? I'm in Riverside County. Riverside County. So you're Southern California. Okay. All right. We're going to have to do something because I just see, I just see us on the stage together somewhere and we're going to have to make that happen. Um, I received that. Yeah. We got (laughs) to, we got to do that because, you know, I just think that when you, this is kind of how I do living above hurt is I get with women of like mind that have a strong, powerful message. And, you know, I don't mind sharing the stage with them. You know, I don't mind allowing them to come in because I'm like the people that I reach are the people that I'm going to reach. But in that audience, there may be people that you can reach. And I just, my whole thing is I just want people to recognize that, you know, whatever I feel that I'm lacking, whatever I feel that I don't have, there is a place for me to find that. So I am whole and complete. And I understand that I've always been whole and complete. But right now, you know, because I, I, I know with me, there was there was always this, okay, Linda, is this all there is to your life? Because this looks like you're living a half a life. 
you know, you're not living a full life. So is this all there really is to your life? Because if there's some more to it, don't you want to go out and find that so you can live that complete life and feel like you are who you say you are? And, you know, right. and people... And you know, just like you, I was angry with the church. I was angry with parents. I was angry with friends. I was angry, you know, and I would, and there was that one person that came up to me and said, you know what, Linda, I see through all that Maybelline. I see through all your acting out. There's something behind that. And so what I want you to do is tell me what happened to you. Why are you so angry? Why are you so bitter? Why are you so resentful? And, you know, I was like, I ain't angry. I ain't bitter. I ain't resentful. I'm a Christian. I'm in the church. I'm a pastor. I'm a this, you know. And she was like, but there's something there. Because, you know, she was like, you know, not so much that you're you're crazy, but she's like, the elevator ain't going all the way up to the top. It keeps stopping. It ain't making it up to the penthouse. So let's see. <laughs> what it looks like going the rest of the way and let's talk about this and let and that's where my healing began but like you said I don't think she understood what she was saying to me and what she was opening up for me and I know at that time I was looking at her like whatever woman just get out my face you know let me just live my life but that opened up the door so that God could speak to me and say look there is more to your life and yeah, there, there is a penthouse and you've never made it up there. You think you're living a good life, but let me show you what you're missing out on. That's always been available to you. It's not that I'm giving it to you now. It's always been there. You chose not to live in that. And so, you know, when we are talking about living and that, that's why, that's why I call it living above hurt, because we have to get to that place where we know that we can soar, you know, because Life is always going to happen. You know, even now we have situations that happen in our lives and we're like, hmm, but now I have the tool set. I have the strategy to get through that and it's not devastating and it's not limiting and it doesn't pull me back into that state of depression or that state of anger like it would have if I didn't have these tools necessary. So yeah, I'm glad you jumped in. I am so glad and welcome all of you guys that have come in. Um, again, we have an open seat. What we're doing today is we're raising money for Living Above Hurt, which is a nonprofit organization. You can give to this. We're just trying to raise $500 today. So that's just five people giving $100, 10 people giving $50, 20 people giving $25, however you want to work it out. But we are here trying to make sure that when that phone call comes in, when people need the services that we have at Living Above Hurt, that we are still there to give them those services and to make sure that they have everything, they have access to everything that we have to offer. And we can do that with your donation. Right now, I'm kind of interviewing Lady T, who I just met on Blab, just started following her today. Um, and she's a, um, I already see she's a presence. She's a, she's a powerful woman. She's been sharing about her book um, and telling us about her journey and her story. And so again, if you want to donate, the donation uh, URL is on the um, on the block next to me, or is it this way? I don't know. I, they always say it's backwards. Yeah, they always say it's backwards. So it's right over there. That's her. That's where you go. Livingabovehurt.com forward slash donate. Like I said earlier, if you are in the if you are in America, in the United States. If you give, we are a 501c3 corporation, so you do get tax a tax write-off for that gift. We do send you a receipt so you can get your tax write-off. If you're in other parts of the country, it's still a tax write-off, but you, you have to know how to do it in your country. I just know about America because this is where I live. So if you want a tax deductible or to tax deduction you can get it through giving to this organization livingabovehurt.com forward slash donate for those of you that are on periscope livingabovehurt.com forward slash donate and i see zane is back and so zane i'm going to let you in but this is this is this is this is my this is my 
everybody is watching. You got people on Periscope, people in here. If you say something inappropriate, I'm going to have to let you go, okay? So, I bet I won't be able to talk. I mean, show myself. Okay, okay, all right. So, as long as you, you stay the course... <laughs> I'm going to let you in. But if you get if you get Linda, Linda. Yes. Linda. Yes. I've got a question. Yes. Will you go on a date with me? Okay. Um <coughs> yeah, see. So you can, you can ban me. <laughs> we we we're going to uh have that discussion. No, no, with I'll, another... I'll stay on I'll stay on topic, don't worry. All right? What's the topic? <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> See, he done woke my mama up. My mama doesn't say, what that man? <laughs> so anyway, back, back. Love you, Zane. But yeah, that's not, this, this is not that type of blab. So here we go. Back to what <laughs> we were talking about. So Lady T is here and we're talking to her um, about her journey, about her book and she's talking about the power of B. She's talking about um, she gave us she gives us seven powers in her book. Yeah. It's someone shooting. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. Is someone shooting outside? Well, I don't know what's going on, but Father God, we pray right now. Let it be all right. Let it be all right, Jesus. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's live TV for you. I, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but anything can happen, right? <laughs> anything can happen and yeah, and I'm, I, you know, they driving fast. We don't know what's going on. So somebody whisper a prayer and we don't know. Don't go outside though, mom. I'm not going outside. Okay. And don't get too close to the window. We don't want no straight nothing. All right. So, um, who, Father God, right now, Jesus, make it all right. But we, we, I thank all of you guys that are here, that are coming. Um, and again, if you donate, we have different levels of donations. If you donate $20, um, First of all, any donation over $20 gets you the advertising that Evan is going to be doing for you. And I don't know if he's going to show up today to talk about it or not. I know he's in Portugal and it is probably after midnight where he is. So I don't know if he's going to actually make it to this blab. But <clears throat> if you give $20 or more, you get put in his system. And he what he does is he takes your domain and he puts you in front of people that want to hear your message. And so, uh, like lady T is a coach. Um, and I, I would assume you do domestic uh, violence coaching. You deal with the victims. Um, well, I actually have a, several um, different coaching um, packages. It just depends on the clientele. Okay. I mean, um, one of my practices is called the mommy coach five. And okay. so, um, I work with, um, Blended families, uh, parents who are um, individuals who are parenting while single or divorcees. Okay. So under that bridge, I work with them. But there is also a component that I work with individuals who are transitioning, okay. um, whether it be a transition with a relationship, a transition with a job or something like that. Just those who are just stuck right there, okay. don't know which way to go. And I kind of help them to sort out those things. OK. And so. If say if she would do if she donated, then she would then get into be able to be put in front of people that are transitioning or people that are parents looking for additional help or looking for that. So these people are looking for that information and Evan brings it together. And so now they're coming to your website because they're looking for your services. They're looking for your uh, products and things of that nature. So whether it's your business website, whether it's your personal website, whether it's your blog, your Facebook page, whatever domain you give him, that's what he's going to promote. And so he said any donation over $20, but also on top of that, 
we have some other people that donated. We have one lady named Marvetta who donated her inspirational CD. Um, we had another lady who has donated her book, which deals with um, abuse. I believe she said domestic violence. It's called Nobody's Business. And it's a fiction book of a woman who went through this and her process on how she came out on the other side. And everyone that has read it, I actually bought it for myself so I could read it on my Kindle. Um, so I haven't read it yet, but everyone that read it that came in on that blab was saying that it was a powerful book. So you have an awesome. option of getting the musical CD or that book. And then I just recently wrote my life story, Don't Count Me Out, and it's not released yet. And so what I'm doing is I'm giving pre-release copies of that book. So you can choose one of those three. At $50, you get the ads and you can choose two of those items. And then at $100, you get all of those plus a few bonuses and you get the ads. And so those are the levels that we're doing. Because again, we're only trying to raise $500 today. Um, but my thing is, if the quicker we can get there, the quicker we can celebrate, the quicker we can just kind of sit here and conversate and not me keep asking for money. Because believe it or not, Linda don't like to ask for money, you know. Um, but nonprofit, if we want to give it to those that we're serving for free or little of cost, then we have to make that cost up some way. And so that's what we're doing today. Um, you can go to livingabovehurt.com forward slash donate and you can donate. And like I said, you get the advertising, you get choices of other gifts that we have available to you. Um, and you know, Y'all know, Linda's been on Blab for how long? Let me look again. Because I, I looked and I was like, wow. For 122 days, I've been on Blab. I haven't been on Blab every day of those 122 days. But in other words, I ain't going nowhere. So after you give, you, you're not going to see me never. You know, well, where that girl go we donated the money to? I'm going to still be here. I do a Living Above Hurt show. Um... Greenwald. Okay, I'm going to give you a chance. Please don't make me regret it. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm doing a show now, uh, Living Above Hurt. I'm doing that show. So, and I definitely want to have Lady T come on as a guest there. Um, well, we do that show on Saturdays, uh, Monday through Friday. I come on and we have con different types of conversations. I also do my coaching from here, Living Above Hurt has nothing to do with my coaching company. It's totally separate, but I do do this. I, I'm the founder. I'm the uh, director of this Living Above Hurt, and we also have a branch called Whole, which is Women Healed of Life's Experiences, and that's what we're raising money for today. Uh, welcome, Wald, I guess. Is the G... Is the G... Silent, or how do you pronounce your name? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's Gwen Wizard. Oh, Gwen Wizard. Okay. Well, welcome. Gwen. How are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I just I just had a few questions, so I stopped by. Um, would you happen to know why the Black Lives Matter movement is an excuse to be racist towards white people? Why the black? Say it again. Black Black Lives Matter movement is an excuse to be racist towards white people. Um, you know, I don't know that that's what it's all about. I think that what it's saying is we, as black individuals, we tend to have a harder way of going about things where we tend to get the bunt, the back end of the stick more than off, more often than not. So I don't think it's against white people i just think it's saying and this is just my understanding now i'm not you know i know about the movement but i'm not i can't say that i'm well read on the movement but what i know about it i think it's just trying to say that you know as black individuals we don't want to be pr suppressed we want to be able to live our lives like everybody else i understand what you're saying do you do you have any views on um, what uh, Beyonce did at the Super Bowl? I think it was um, uh, it was something about uh, the Black Panther movement. 
I believe it was. Like, she was uh, insinuating that, um, yeah, like, to be racist towards white people. I'm, I'm not too sure. I, I think that's what she was insinuating at. She was supposed – it was, like, the 50th anniversary of the Black Panthers, I believe. That's what yeah. it was celebrating. Well, I and think I, it was – I, I go ahead, Lady T. So, um, Juan, um, both of your questions um, towards, you know, for Linda is about um, race conscience. And so, as with anything, we, you know, every individual have their own perspective of what they see is a challenge in this country. And so when it comes to um, Black Lives, the Black Lives Movement, and I'm not um, well versed on that either. However, I do think the whole intent of that is to say that the lives of those who have been tragically um, sacrificed um, over the last year, just saying that their lives should have mattered before um, those individuals' lives were taken. So that's one. The second thing is, as it relates to um, Beyonce, I, I, I am um, almost for certain that there are many other rock bands and other kind of um, music icons or people who are in the music industry who have voiced their way of expression for whatever, you know, mm -hmm. just because they're in the forefront. So when it comes to what Beyonce um, did for the Super Bowl was her own way of voicing what she felt like she wanted to um, put out there um, for the knowledge of people. She had a large audience that was um, um, that was watching the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl was very diverse. And I think that she just gave her opinion through the art of music and through the art of um, demonstration the way she saw fit. Um, and that's a reflection of her own perspective of what she wanted to share. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't want you guys to think that I'm like, I'm attacking you in any way or like mm -hmm. specifically asking you guys these questions because of your racial diversity or whatever. It's, I've, I've asked other people this question, no matter what ethnicity they are. I'm just curious of your opinion. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah. And that's okay. not a problem. Um, that's not a problem. But, you know, we we are not. I mean, this blab is not even on that subject. We're talking about something different. But that is a form when you think about it. You know, the Trayvon Martins of the world, the. Uh, the gentleman that was in Ferguson and, you know, the ones that have uh, the people that have lost their lives. And I understand and recognize because I'm that YouTuber that's always on YouTube watching different things. I recognize that, you know, white people get harassed just as much as black people. Um, and, you know, and then there are the police that are out there trying to do good things and they're not just violating others rights and things so we understand that but i think that at the end of the day every we live in america and everyone has freedom of voice or you know freedom to freedom of speech is what i'm trying to say and so they can say what it is that they want but i try to be fair in everything that i do and that's all i can do i can only govern myself as how I want to show up in the world and how I want to have the world respond to what I do. So, you know, I respect everyone regardless of their things. I even try to understand why you believe what you believe. Um, but that's how Linda chooses to show up in the world. I can't, like she said, I can't speak for someone else. And who knows if I had a big audience like Beyonce did and I wanted to, you know, talk about living above hurt or talk about abuse or whatever. I would have taken that opportunity to do it, too. I would have because I, I have a captive audience or a seemingly captive audience because everyone is watching. So sometimes when you have something that you want to say, you try to make the most of it and take the best opportunity to say what it is you want to say. And it doesn't. And I think, you know. Beyonce has fans of all nationalities, so I don't think she was trying to um, change that. I just think that she was, like um, Lady T said, she was just making a statement, and people either heard it or they didn't. That's, you know. Yeah, but you know what is really awesome? Because he, he um, actually just left the seat. Yeah. But um, getting back to where where your topic is and what your show is about, 
let's talk about colorless love because whether you know if it if it was um, someone else that was of a different pigment of skin, then it would not have been such so much say so about it, you know. Exactly. But here it is. Our our world has started to base has begun to base itself on entertainment. And so sometimes when it's just all about entertainment, they forget that she's still an African-American woman. Exactly. At the end of the day, she's still exactly. a brown girl. Exactly. So if she used her voice at that time to be, um, I want to be in my own culture, then she has every right to do that. But at the same time, we have to get we have to raise rise above um, the consciousness of what what things are and start seeing things through the eyes of love, because that's what matters most. Exactly. And, you know, exactly. With, with living up above her, if people will begin to love themselves and people will begin to express love, not only just today, because today is Valentine's Day, but begin to genuinely know that this infinite intelligence that we call God loves us all, exactly. you know, and it, and it gives us life. Mm-hmm. Um, it is there for us to embrace. And so it was a great thing for him calling in. At the same time, let's, you know, get back to the topic of colorless love because exactly. love is not supposed to hurt the way it's hurting these days. Exactly. Exactly. And that is that is what it's all about, because even I was talking with the lady who was telling me that she she was like, you know, I just the I guess the relationship that she was in. She was a very dark black woman. Um, and she was with a very light skinned, I think, cause to me, I, at first I thought when she showed me his picture, I was like, Oh, is he Caucasian? And she was like, no, he's black. I was like, oh, okay. So she was with a very fair, very fair black man, but he was always telling her, which is a form, you know, this is a form of her abuse. He was always telling her go get some skin coloring or go get some skin lightening, you know? And I'm like, wait a minute. When he got in a relationship with you, did he not look at your skin? You know, why would he, after three years, decide, I want you to go and lighten your skin because you were that color when you guys got together. And so sometimes we don't look at that. And, and that's why I kind of rolled it in that, you know, abuse, whatever you look at abuse, whether it's being bullied, whether it's verbal, whether it's mental, emotional, financial, uh, sexual, whatever the abuse is, it's all it all comes down to we want love we want to be loved we want to be accepted by the people we say that we love or the people that say they love us we want them to accept us and so sometimes we're willing to lay down and say well you can treat me any kind of way because I want you to love me and I so I like the way I like the way you said that about colorless love that, you know, let's not get into the black, the white of it. Let's not get into the race of it. Let's not even get into um, all of this other stuff. Let's just understand that, first of all, I got to love me. Because if I don't love me, I can't love you. You know, because I, I believe it was the Bible that says, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if I don't have any self-love then I can't love my neighbor. If I don't, if I don't think, you know, and I say this with my coaching, if you don't take time to invest in yourself, then how am I supposed to invest in you? If you don't take time to love yourself and know what you deserve as an individual, as a human being, let's get back to the B. If you don't know how to express how to be, then how am I supposed to know how to react to you or even respond to you? Because you don't even know. You don't have that thought process. And I think many of us, that's where it stems from. You know, it stems from the generational stuff because we know that some things are passed down through the bloodline in our generations. But I also think, you know, because I remember as a child, people telling me, oh, that's stupid. Don't be stupid, you know, and when you grow up and someone says, "Okay, Linda, I want you to um, I want you to sing a song. The first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, wait a minute. I can't do that because I'm stupid. 
You know what I mean? Where did that thought come from? It came from someone telling you that everything you did was stupid or that you could never do anything right or what I know someone has told, I've heard it said a lot, you'll always be like your daddy, he was good for nothing, you good for nothing, you know, and so you hear this stuff and, you know, and all of that is abuse. You know, when you really think about it, the way we treat our little people, the way we treat our children, it, it, it's borderline abusive and we don't even realize that that's verbal abuse or mental abuse because now these yeah. people are coming back. The And I say people because little people grow up to be adults and they are now perpetuating that because now you see that little girl grew up into to be somebody's mother and she's saying you're stupid you know stop being stupid you'll never be anything you'll never amount to anything and now that little girl grows up and now she's doing it and so it goes on and on and on and so yeah this this is this are you yeah <laughs> we could go yeah. deep on this, you know, but I, I love what you, when you said that. So you just kind of triggered something on me. I was like, Oh yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's really go there. Let's, let's, let's talk about some of the other abuses. Let you know, cause everybody wants to talk about the physical abuse. Everybody want to talk about the sexual abuse. But when you start talking about these, these other abuses, you start stepping on people's toes. And, you know, and I know yeah. even with me, I have to watch it sometimes because sometimes I grew up in a, in, in a, in a, in a place where that stuff was thrown out and you don't know until you know. Right. But now that I know, I'm like, oh, don't say that, Linda, because that's that that can be something that triggers something later on in somebody's life. So be careful, you know, be careful, little mouth, what you say, you know, and I have to, you know, I have to remember that the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so I can speak life or I can speak death. And I'm not just talking about in my own situation. I'm talking about in somebody else's life. You know, I can look at you and be like, oh, well, woo -woo, and speak life or death, you know. So welcome, Zuri. Yeah. So, you know, it's really interesting. We talked about how um, from childhood things are being spoken into our lives. And um, when I was writing this, one of the things, one of the, the, uh, the encounters that I had through the process 